No. No. I don't even want to know what that is. Oh ho ho! What have we here? An animatic from a deleted scene from a new generation? How interesting! Let's take a look at this, shall we? Hey, what are you doing in there? Mind your own beeswax. This new tidbit of info comes courtesy of Yosha Van Dijk, a storyboard artist who helped put together a concept animatic. To quote, In fact, this is not a deleted scene, but a scene from a completely different version of the movie. In this version, Sunny, Izzy, Zip, and Hitch need to get the three magic stones to restore friendship. But the stones seem to be losing their magic, right after one last power surge that already caused havoc in Maritime Bay and Bridalwood. After making it to the Pegasus City of Zephyr Heights, the group plans an elaborate heist to steal the magic stone during a concert of Princess Pip. There's only one problem. The stone is a part of the stage. And I hear you say silver, you tenacious tawny. Why bother about a storyline from an abandoned version? Ivan Van Dijk says. This sequence was a lot of fun to do, even though I had to finish it in a bit of a rush to make it to the deadline for the first screening. While I was working on it, it was already clear that this wasn't going to be in the final movie, but I still got to complete it and it was a blast to see it come to life. Well, part of me wants to honor that passion, and it's always a welcome aspect. More than that, understanding how the characters could have been presented can offer some insight on the final product. So let's tackle this and see what insights might appear. The first aspect comes courtesy of Van Dijk's own summary. Sunny, Izzy, Hitch, and Zip are all of one mind and purpose. This is because there's a ticking clock. The stones are losing their magic, preceded by a violent power surge. It's the power surge! We don't have much time! Whenever the crew decided to remove this element, there was a void left. What made Sunny's quest so urgent? Hitch's role evolved to serve as that urgency by declaring that he would arrest both Sunny and Izzy, and he only started to join the group as Sprout started the next countdown towards conflict. The animatic is vague, but I get the impression that Hitch is the one who tries to snag the stone, only to get knocked into a pony with a sandbag upon his head. Shh, he's sleeping. Is that pony dead? Because that joke works best if the pony's actually dead. I know this because college humor already made that joke with Batman. Shh, not so loud. you wake him. The weather machine appears to have gone haywire. <laughs> This highlights one of the things I enjoyed about the movie. So many extra ponies provided the humor, even while being serious. Queen Haven has been arrested for being a phony pony full of baloney. The second thing is that, at one point, Pegasi still had some control over the weather. Though I don't know if there's any significance to this being a weather control machine versus a weather manufacturing machine. This ties into one of the biggest hurdles for G4 fans. There's always a nagging question. How could they have let things get so bad? It's a good question. I wish I had an answer. I use DS9 as a quote because the two-parter past tense also provides a question with no answer. That lack of an answer is the point, a warning of what could be. I've decided to treat the transition from friendship is magic to a new generation the same way. Perhaps we'll learn more in a true series, but it's enough for me to know that even the best times can suffer a relapse. New plan! Grab it and run! Why is that always the new plan? Granted, that often ended up being the new plan in the movie, but only twice. Third time was more survive the genocidal maniac. All signs point to Zip making the grab, but there's nothing in plain that she has any relation to Pip, though Van Dijk did clarify that they are indeed related. It's just that Pip can't make out the culprit. Here's the biggest thing about this could have been seen. It makes me appreciate the fine line Pip's character walked. In so many ways, that moment where she's revealed as a fake flyer is karmic. Pip was complicit in maintaining the lie. She benefited from the lie. She did not, however, start the lie. If she had been crueler to Sunny and Izzy, I might have felt a greater satisfaction at this harsh revelation. Instead, there was the right amount of vulnerability to make me feel sympathetic. The Pip in this animatic is much more selfish and hostile, so I feel no sympathy when Zip, who is able to fly, outperforms Pegasus guards and sends them crashing into Pip. 
Really, it comes down to the phrase, seize her. How often do you hear a good person say that? I can only think of one time. Seize her! Only she knows where the princess is! Not much more to say afterwards. The team makes their escape with each member having at least attempted a contribution. That was something with which the movie struggled. It was hard to give each pony a role in the various scenarios. Poor Zip didn't have a standout moment after the Zephyr Heights heist, and even battling Sprout, she and Hitch just made things worse. Okay, that was a bad idea. So the other takeaway I have for this is a good challenge to future writers. As hard as it might be to introduce a character into the team, it's just as important to ask how they continue to contribute. I'm glad for this little insight into the early production stages and the evolution of a story. The story behind a story, really. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to see what I can find in the Equestrian Education Association's recycling. Thanks to all my Patreon and Ko-fi supporters. You help keep these videos self-sustaining. If you'd like to support After The Fact on Patreon or Ko-fi, you can find links in the description below. And thanks to the folks who gave up both their time and creative energy. And if you have any artwork of Silver Quill, I'd love to see it. You can tag me as MLP Silver Quill on DeviantArt or Twitter. I'm Silver Quill. Thanks for watching.